The disruption caused by the challenges of the last two years have proven urgency on how we build resilience in Africa's education systems. And in the wake of COVID-19, we're still grappling with learning losses and great exclusion in education. But at the same time, more people have fallen into extreme poverty, limiting their ability to invest in learning opportunities. And looking ahead, there are more challenges coming our way. At the same time, the pandemic gave rise to remarkable innovation. Virtual learning became a viable and invaluable alternative. Learning took place over radio and TV. We saw the rise of mobile and SMS-based revision materials, online study communities, and applications designed to ease the administrative burden experienced by teachers. Most importantly, the last two years proved that education systems could be more agile and made to be more resilient than we ever imagined. Now it's time to transition these efforts from being a reaction to COVID-19 to being a resolve to build a mainstream, more resilient education systems. Systems that can withstand shock. Systems that continue to drive learning in an inclusive way, even in the face of disruption. Systems that have the learner at the center and enable young people in Africa to realize their aspirations and systems that develop learners who see themselves not only as employees, but also as innovators, entrepreneurs, and transformative leaders. Because while COVID-19 was unprecedented in its scale and impact, it won't be the last disruption that we face. Conflict, climate change, forced displacement. Each of these interrupts education and the economic prospects of young people. Which is why at the Mastercard Foundation, these issues are central to our work. Since 2006, the foundation has focused on two goals, advancing education for young people and deepening financial inclusion for the poor, primarily in Africa. In 2018, we doubled down on our commitment to the continent through the launch of our 10-year strategy, Young Africa Works. Alongside our partners, including ADEA, we set out to ensure that 30 million young people can access dignified and fulfilling work by 2030. And we placed a particular emphasis on reaching young women who will constitute 70% of our target. We'll also focus on forcibly displaced people and young people with disabilities. Of course, the road to dignified and fulfilling work begins with what we do in education systems. Right from the family, through early childhood education, basic education and onwards. It's about content, pedagogy, and how we assess learning, whether that's at secondary, TVET, or university levels. It is about how we prepare the learner to transition from school to the world of work, whether as a wage employee or as an entrepreneur. These are all central to our work at the foundation. ADEA has been and continues to be a strategic partner of the MasterCard Foundation in this journey. So we look forward to collaborate with ADEA and other stakeholders across the continent as we, together, seek to strengthen education systems in ways that make them more resilient and responsive to the needs of young people, the most important asset that the continent has. Thank you.